Hi everyone, it is Tuesday, March 16th, and I'm so sorry I didn't vlog yesterday, but I did get my last week's vlog edited and uploaded for your viewing pleasure, so I will link that in the cards and in the description box for you. Today, I did get caught up with my buddy read for We Hunt the Flame. Yay, super excited. I was like three days behind, but I'm loving this book. I loved it the first time I read it. Of course, I'm going to love it the second time I read it. I think my friend who I'm buddy reading it with, I think she's really enjoying it too. So I just love this world. I love Nasir and I love Zafira. They're just great. Also, I'm about halfway through with If Walls Could Talk by Juliet Blackwell. This is book number one in the Haunted Home renovation series. This is for my March Mystery Madness TBR. No, it's not. It's for, this is for the Are You Afraid of the Dark prompt, animal on the cover, and book with a red cover. I did stretch it a little bit for that red cover because literally only like part of it is red, but, and there's also an Irish setter on the cover. So the dog is red. You know what? I just kind of, I went with it. This is what I'm doing now. I really like uh, Juliet Blackwell's writing. I've read a couple of other cozy mysteries by her. So in this book, our main character, she is um, in the construction biz. She actually owns her own business. She took over from her father after he retired. And her friend is renovating this home, supposedly haunted. And she didn't really kind of want to be a part of it. I think maybe just because they were friends. Also, her mother recently passed. So she was going through that. She was going through a very difficult time. So she just wanted to take some time off. So, um... I think she ended up doing like the estimate um, for as a favor, but that was it. And she comes over after this demo party. Her friend is like wasted and like demo party. We're all like, he's a, like, I think a rock star celebrity or something. He's getting closer to retirement age. So he wanted to throw this big old party where a demo party where people come and, you know, basically tear down the house or the inside of the house. And there's alcohol involved. What can go wrong, right? So she comes over just to see how he's doing. He's totally wasted. Not really drunk, but kind of hungover. And they're looking through the house and everything. And all of a sudden, a man comes rushing into the room they're in, holding a nail gun and like firing at them, gets out of the way, disarms him. Um, she notices that he is like nails in his abdomen and also his hand is missing one of his hands um we later find out that he um dies at the hospital from his injury so um becomes a murder because in her mind no one would really like shoot themselves with the nail gun if it was an accident you might like one sure in your hand in your foot in your abdomen there was like multiple nails in there and then also he was missing a hand, like it was cut off. Like there's no way that's self-inflicted, right? So she's thinking murder and she's very frustrated because cops are kind of just like brushing it off. Like at first the guy, um, when he was alive, the cops asked like, who did this to you? And he was just like, oh, nobody, this is self-inflicted. And then right before he dies, he does like this deathbed confession that this guy, Matt, did it. Matt is her friend who she, who was doing the demo party. And so obviously like her friend is convicted. Um, she doesn't think the police are doing that great of a job. And then also she's kind of implemented in this as well, because she was listed as the contractor when really she wasn't. She had no nothing to do with this. So Osha is basically looking at her. So she's like, takes it upon herself to solve this. And then to top it all off, she starts seeing this guy's ghost. Not just in the house, because normally ghosts just haunt the place where there are violent deaths, right? Wrong. He's haunting her. So like he shows up in her house, in her car, and he's basically imploring her to find out who killed him. And she's like, well, on your deathbed, you told the police that this Matt guy did it. And he was like, Matt, no, Matt didn't do it. He doesn't really quite remember. I guess his memory's going if you like cross over to the other side. But so all of this leads to her kind of sleuthing and trying to figure out what's going on. So that's basically where I'm at. I'm about halfway through and I am enjoying it so far. I really like her writing style. I've never read a paranormal cozy quite like this. 
usually when I read a paranormal cozy, it has to do with witches. I think that's um, like the extent of my paranormal cozies. So I'm really interested to see where this is going. Um, also, I came home from work and I filmed two videos, so I'll be editing and uploading those. Since I don't have any live streams planned this week, um, I'm probably going to be editing and uploading one to take the place of that. So um, probably I want to have it up by tomorrow. So fingers crossed I'll be able to edit. One that I filmed is my February wrap up and it's like over an hour long. So pray for me editing that. So I just wanted to update y'all a little bit on what's going on and I will talk to y'all a little bit later. Bye. It is Thursday, March 18th, and I just got home from work, um, and I got a package. I don't remember ordering anything, but that doesn't mean anything. Rebecca Zanetti, Forgotten Sins. I definitely didn't order this. Maybe that is, it was a gift. Oh, this is from, this is from Alicia. Uh, it says, I hope you're having a better week. And if not, then I hope this at least brightens your day a little. I recently read this series and thought you might like it. Love your channel. Enjoy from Alicia Wright. That is just so sweet. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I'm going to have to message her. Uh, she is so supportive and honestly like every time I drop a video she watches it and every time I have a live stream she's there and that's just really thoughtful and sweet warms my heart uh, and I'm super excited she she was talking to me about this series so I really can't wait to read this it's gonna be fantastic all right so I just wanted to show you that uh yesterday St. Patrick's Day I made corned beef and cabbage for like the first time. I've never made corned beef before and it, it turned out pretty good. I caught up on my buddy read for We Hunt the Flame and I caught up on my buddy read for Empire of Gold. I'm very excited about that. I'm just not, <laughs> I'm just not feeling my TBR like at all. I want to read anything but what's on my TBR. Uh, like, and I was talking about how, like, I was surprised how I was following my TBRs for, like, the so many readathons that I was doing, and I was, I think I got overconfident, and it came back and bit me in the butt, because I do not want to read anything on my TBR. I started listening to What Angels Fear by C.S. Harris. Um, it's a reread for me. I don't really remember a whole lot about it. I think I read this book back in 2016, probably before that, but I'm just like, it's not holding my interest at all, which is a shame because I wanted to reread it because I remember liking it. I don't remember much of it, but I remember liking it so I could continue on with the series, but it's just, I don't think it's going to happen. I really, really don't. I finished If Walls Could Talk. Uh, by Juliet Blackwell. I did enjoy it. I didn't like it as much as her other series um, that I read from her. Um, Death with a Dark Red Rose by Juliet Buckley. I, that's her pen name, I believe, or the other way around. Juliet Blackwell is a pen name of Julia Buckley. Either or. So I really like that series more than I like the Haunted Home Renovation series. But it was still good. I mean... I am interested to see where it goes, but I just think that like my mentality of not wanting to read books on my TBR definitely kind of skewed my enjoyment of it. And that's not what I want to do like at all. Just want to read some like very short smutty romances. That's really what I'm in the mood to read. And you know, I watched Izzy's vlog, um, she read Mounted by a Monster Under Her Bed by, oh my gosh, what is her name? Mina Shea. And it was free. 
it's not like on KU, it was legitimately free and it's like 16 pages and it literally is just about a girl who starts a sexual relationship with a monster that lives under her bed to kind of calm him down because she, this monster has been on her bed since she was like six. Um, and she would just talk to this monster, you know, like she was scared of it at first, but you know, she had fallen out of her window trying to save a cat one night and it saved her and the cat. So instead of being scared of it, she became friends with it. And she started talking about her day, started talking about the people who were bullying her. And so the monster heard like of the people who were bullying her and went to, you know, exact his revenge on these people. And so she tries to calm him down um, when she's older, not when she's little, because that's just weird, right? Um, when she's older, <laughs> she goes to college, and the monster moves from her bed at home to her bed in college, and so to calm him down, like, she started off, like, with just, like, hand jobs, and now, it, like, it just, it blossomed to full-on sex, and that's literally where it ends, like, it's just, like, they have their first sexual encounter, and then it ends, so very, um, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't the worst book I've ever read in my life. I mean, I'm, I read Kissing the Coronavirus. Yeah, 16 pages, no plot. No, n really. I mean, she gets a backstory like pretty well. And then I was just, I was just curious at that point, you know? So I look up this author on Amazon and there is a lot, a lot of books in this Mounted by a Monster series. Like, and so... I sorted the priority to from price low to high. And there was another free book, um, Where Puffer. Just let that sink in. So I've read a lot of shifter romances, a lot. Uh, but I can honestly say that I have never, ever read a Where Puffer, like a puffer fish, like this man changes into a puffer fish. I've never read anything like this. Slightly more plot than the Under Her Bed book, but he's a puffer fish. At least it was entertaining because I was laughing the entire time. And then I saw that I had a Jodie Slaughter, oh my god, To Be Alone With You. It's the one that was just released. And you know, I started uh, reading that. I don't want to say I'm abandoning my TBR. I don't want to say that because then I feel like a failure. I was doing so good. I just, I was too confident, you know, and now here we are. We'll see how I feel later on. We'll see. But I definitely, I'm excited to, I'm excited to read this. Maybe I'll just have to, you know, read this, see if it fits any prompts on my TBR. But um, I just wanted to update you a little bit on what's been going on since I didn't really vlog at all yesterday. And uh, just kind of, I hope I get my reading stride back because I was doing so good. I don't want to hit a slump. I don't want to hit a reading slump. And that's what I think is going to happen if I force myself to read books that I don't want to read. Even though it's on a TBR, I shouldn't force myself, you know. Uh, all right. Well, I I felt so tired driving home, but now that I'm home, I'm like wide awake. So I am going to change, probably lay down. I did want to film a couple of videos, but I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to lay down. I'm in a filming slump too. <laughs> I keep putting off filming, which I filmed too. One is already uploaded. It's, it was my, um, February wrap up and then I filmed another you know shorter video um so I probably edit that and schedule it to post for Saturday but I really wanted to film you know my next my next installment of who picked these wrecks because I want that series to take off I want you know I want there to be more on my channel than just vlogs and live streams like I want there to be you know more content for you because you know you get into a rut and people wonder why you don't grow you know kind of thing but I don't know I just I'm I'm just feeling slumpy all around with reading at least with books on my TBR and then with booktube Hopefully I can break it. I'll talk to you later.
Bye. Hey everyone, it is Sunday, March 21st, and sorry I didn't vlog at all yesterday. Um, it was my sister's birthday, she turned 51, and we had like a little birthday lunch, so we were over there for a few hours. And then we had a movie night with some family because they just got a new TV. So we were over there all night, so I really didn't get a whole lot of reading done. I did read chapters 1 through like 12 of Alien Quarantine Rescue. So I'm buddy reading that with Izzy at Happy For Now, Kayla at On The Fritz, and Brie at In Love and Words. So it's pretty interesting. It's a lot. It is... It's, it is a lot. So basically, um, Earth has been like in devastation from the b virus and people have to stay quarantined and in their house because it seems like everyone has a different strain of the virus and if the different strains come in contact, so if people get in contact with um, another person, their virus like activates and kills them in like three days. So very strange. And we have this alien, he comes down because he, like his race has been just looking for human beings to who they're compatible with because their planet has been just demolished, cannot have life on this planet. So they left and so they're scanning Earth and Gun, who is, that's how you say his name and not alien, scanned Ellie, who is our female protagonist and realized that she is like the perfect match for him. Like that is his mate. And so what he needs is he has antibodies in his cum and he gives her the antibodies that help her stay healthy and fight off the buronavirus through sex. And um, he is slowly wasting away himself. He needs like her blood injected into his heart to make his heart start beating again and you know for him to start breathing again so it's very it's a lot but it's really good I I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying it so and I think all my other buddy readers are enjoying it as well um definitely some laugh out loud moments um <laughs> oh my goodness Robin Lovett I read the uh, Planet of Desire series by uh, this author and that was super good as well. So I, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying this book. So Are You Afraid of the Dark ended yesterday and I did not finish any of my books. I finished one book and that took care of two prompts. I'm halfway through What Angels Fear, which is for the historical fiction prompt. Um, didn't finish that. I don't even think I'm going to finish it today just because I'm listening. I'm gonna be listening to Siri read to me the you know rest of Alien Quarantine Rescue while we deep clean the house we're doing some spring cleaning so I just don't think it's gonna happen and I feel terrible because this week has just been I haven't felt like reading anything on my TBR which is unfortunate so I failed and I don't like failing but I don't know. I talked to Deja and she was like, if you're not feeling it, you shouldn't force yourself to read it because, you know, obviously you'll go into a reading slump and you don't want that either. So <sighs> I just got to get over it. Just got to get over it. But, um, so yeah, that's, I basically just wanted to update you because I feel like I've been, you know, in the wind for a while. So I will hopefully update you a little bit more tonight, um, after we do some cleaning and, see what else I can read today. Bye. Oh, and I totally forgot that yesterday I uploaded my February haul and tracking my spending. So that video is live for your viewing pleasure. All right, now you're all up to date. Bye. Hey everyone. It's like, oh my God, I don't even know what time it is. Maybe 10 o'clock, 10.30, Sunday night. Um, I did a lot of cleaning today. A lot of cleaning. But I did finish Alien Quarantine Rescue. I told you that earlier. And I finished What Angels Fear by C.S. Harris. And rereading it now, I did enjoy it. Um, I just felt it was like really long-winded. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm used to, you know, quick romances. This this book is pretty thick. But um, still enjoy it. I am planning on continuing on with the series. I don't know when. I don't know when. Because... 
I'm not in the mood to read murder mysteries. I mean, this does have a kind of a really cute romance in it, but it's, it's not a romance. It's not, it's not the main plot. Obviously it's a murder mystery. The main plot is the murder and Sebastian trying to figure out who done it while running from the police because he was basically not necessarily framed, but everyone, like all evidence was like pointing to him because the girl who was murdered was coming to see him and his pistol was the one that was left at the murder scene. He's trying to figure out the whodunit because he was accused. This is a pretty long series too. I don't know exactly how many books is in this series, but if they're all equally long-winded. <sighs> I get the audiobooks though. Should make it pretty quick to get through, but like I said, I'm really only in the mood for like quick steamy romances. That's it. That's all I want to read. <sighs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Then I did finish To Be Alone With You by Jodie Slaughter. I really, really enjoyed this one. It's my first Jodie Slaughter, but it's not going to be my last because it was really, really good. Set during the beginning of the COVID pandemic. So um, the two main characters are... Um, it's kind of like a forced proximity. They're, you know, quarantined together. Um, but when she first goes out there, she is just staying in his guest house, hoping not to run into him um, for a little bit of vacation. And then while, you know, they're out there, they get word of, you know, the COVID pandemic, like, running rampant. And so they decided to um, stay there because he basically, he's an artist. He's, like, sculpts stuff. And so he works from home. And when everything happened, her boss you know, called her and said, you know, don't even bother coming back to work, you know. They stay there. She has really strong feelings for him because, like, 10 years ago, she, like, she kind of confessed, like, I love you, let's have a relationship, and he is 10 years her senior, and he was just getting out of a really bad breakup, so he let her down, but it kind of, like, really devastated her, and so she's been avoiding him for the last, like, 10 years, <laughs> but now, you know, with the whole her staying in his guest house and it's like the literal only reason why he said no 10 years ago was because he just got out of a really bad breakup so he wasn't you know he wasn't looking to be in another relationship so soon and in his mind she was really young <sighs> fast forward 10 years they get a, they get their second chance it, it's kind of like a second chance and forced proximity, and an age gap. So, if any of those intrigue you, definitely pick this one up. It's super. It's good. So, that's everything that I finished today. I've made the decision to forego my TBR. And I don't make that decision lightly because, you know, I... I was talking to Deja and I was like I feel like a failure you know if I quit my TBR kind of thing and I you know I was even talking like the the readathon for are you afraid of the dark I didn't finish all the prompts for that readathon and I was saying like that even makes me feel even more like a failure but she reminded me that TBRs are supposed to be fun and it's supposed to guide your reading not like control it so if you're not having fun and you don't want to read anything on your TBR, you should just kind of let it go. No harm, no foul kind of thing. So that's what I'm going to do. Sorry. Very itchy. Very itchy. I said I was going to take a break from the readathons in April. <sighs> Mostly because I've been going hard on the readathons. I wanted, I wanted to take a break anyway and kind of read what I want. And then also NaNoWriMo is happening in April. So I wanted to focus on my writing. I wanted to get back into writing. That was one of my goals for this year because I didn't hardly write anything last year. So instead of, you know, it happening in April, it's, it's just happening a week early. It's happening a little bit earlier than anticipated, but I feel like um, it's what I need to do because if I keep trying to like force myself a reading slump is just going to happen. And I don't want that to happen. So I hope you guys aren't too angry at me. But I feel like that's this is what's best. So we'll see. We'll see how next week goes. 
you know, kind of just reading what I want kind of thing and not having to be, not having the stress of not reading on what's on my TBR and not finishing the readathons and I'm just going to kind of let it go and hopefully my stress will come down. My anxiety will come down. <laughs> and then also I'm just going to use the week, you know, not only to read what I want, but also to prepare, prepare for NaNoWriMo. I, you know, want to get my notes out, want to start reading my work in progress. I got to get my mind back in the that gear, you know, shifting the gears from reader to writer. And I just bought a new keyboard. I don't know when it's going to arrive, but hopefully before <laughs> NaNoWriMo happens. But it's making that, like that purchase and, you know, getting my notes out and everything. And I was even thinking and going over some scenes and plots um, last night when I was like laying down and kind of trying to unwind to go to bed. Um, so I'm just going to shift. I'm going to, you know, slowly shift this week and prepare for NaNoWriMo. So, um, I also kind of want to do some, like, writing sprints. You know, everybody, a lot of people on YouTube, they do reading and productivity sprints. Um, I wanted to kind of do a couple in April for NaNoWriMo, for writing. What do you guys think about that? Are any of my viewers like would be interested in something like that and you don't necessarily have to write I mean you could do whatever you want they could technically be called pro productivity sprints instead of you know like reading sprints you could read too you can do whatever you want um I would just be using that time to write so what do you think about that let me know in the comments if that was if that would be something you would want to see from me in April all right so I just wanted to update y'all a little bit kind of clear my mind. Hopefully y'all, like I said, hopefully y'all aren't angry with me for abandoning my TBR and the readathons. But I hope you agree with me that it's the best move. So I'm going to go to bed and I will, you know, talk to y'all in the coming week. And I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend and you have a good Monday tomorrow. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.